Hello, Solaja here. This is the first of a number of videos that I'm going to make that will show people how to build a CPU in Minecraft. In this video, I'll be going over D flip flops and program counters. This here is the basic D flip flop that is on the Minecraft wiki. The purpose of a D flip flop is to act as a form of memory storage. This is the input bit, this is the output here. Whatever is, whatever is input is output fairly quickly. This is the enable bit. You can use it to save. So no matter what I do here now, the memory has saved on zero. If I write one to the input while sa the save is dark, it'll go red and then I can save it. From here it will remain red. This D flip flop here formed the basis of my first CPU. This is another type of D flip flop that I made myself. It's not as good, it's a little bit slower, but it does all the same things. This here is a one wide D flip flop that I found on the Minecraft forums. I believe it was made by a person called X, I C K S. So this is the input here, and that's the control. Now, by stringing two D flip flops together, which I've done over here, this is one of the basic ones, like that. If you put two of them next to each other and you invert the clock signal, so this is the clock line here, this one takes an unaltered clock, and this one over here takes a inverted clock. What that means is that it essentially becomes edge, tri edge triggered. So that's the output there by the way. It doesn't matter what I do here, whether it's high or low, it won't actually change the output. The output will only change when it goes from low to high. So at the instant when this torch is placed, it'll go high. Um, so you see here it will only go from high to low once I've triggered the, the clock cycle on rising edge. Now these have a number of purposes from memory storage to program counters, which is what I've done over here. I've strung three edge triggered D flip flops together and actually pulled the output of this last one and curled it around to the uh, input of the first one again so that they're sort of connected in a loop. What that means is that every time the clock pulses it'll change by one. See this one is active, then this one, then this one. And that forms the basis of how my CPU performs program counting, how it performs, how it selects the next instruction and so on. What it actually does is whatever value is here gets passed to this one so you've got to make sure that only one of these is high. For example, if um, if a second one was high, if I do this, so now I've got two high, that is essentially breaking it. it. It won't work like that, so you've got to have some sort of way of ensuring that only one of these is active at a time. So there we are. I've also given it a um, tiny little 2-bit memory and bus. So what we have here is if I come up here, you can see I've just sort of, you can say hard-coded a few bits in. This one is 1, 0. This one is 
zero one and this one is one one so we've got one in decimal that's one two and three and if I come back and activate the program counter you can actually see the the bus here which is what it's all connected to it goes one two three then it loops around and goes one two three and that's really the principle of how my CPU worked. When um, the one that's high, it turns these torches dark, which allows whatever the signal here is to pass through. If they're on, it overwrites the uh, signal with high, which then gets inverted and produces nothing and all that's put onto the bus so we can see here the bus is well the bus is inverted to the output but the output is one zero which is what the second value was so another good thing about this method is that it can run with variable clock speed it's very easy to control the clock speed so if I put a slow clock on it you can see it changes slowly whereas I can also put a faster clock on it so it changes much more quickly. This makes it very easy to control um, the speed of your CPU. And I think that, uh, that just about finishes my first video on how to build a CPU.